What's up, everyone? Dave Martinson here, back again with another basketball discussion. Sans my co-host Pat Sheehan, but you know, in his stead, I have the head of the Nitro Rof Rifle Association, the world's number one gaming journalist, but more importantly, the world's number one Spurs fan, Andy Cortez, with me today. Andy, how are you doing today? Pat, don't worry about it. I got this, dude. I have it on lock. Um, just, you know, relax on your vacation in the Bahamas. You can sit back sipping on a daiquiri, right? I got this. We're going to talk Spurs and Kawhi. Dave, I'm doing good, man. It's good to talk to you again. Having a, I don't think I've seen you in like a year or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's been a minute for sure. I know we've been trying to set this up for a while, actually, and um, I'm kind of just happy that the trade finally happened. So we yeah, can really yeah, just for get sure. to it. Getting that exclusive content from Andy Cortez. For can't, sure, man. Can't Absolutely. Complain. But uh, yeah, so Nostalgia Normally is a weekly pop culture podcast. And of course, that regular scheduled programming will be here each and every week, myself and Pat. So if you want that music, movies, and TV talk, subscribe on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you want to get it and help us out there. But last week, I talked with John Opeck, a friend of both of ours, about NBA free agency, LeBron, Boogie the Warriors, various other topics. Now, for the second week in a row, back again talking ball so andy uh how did you become a spurs fan how did you become so invested in this team and this melodrama that seems to have perhaps ended for you, for your franchise how did you get to this point um i think the f I, my dad grew up a lakers fan um even though he lived in texas just because you know magic and you know the 80s sort of uh prime time uh, that that's sort of like watching the Showtime Lakers uh, was sort of his thing. And that's just, it's kind of like how we all grew up Bulls fans in the nineties. Like we just, we rooted for the popular thing. So he never really had a huge rooting uh, interest in really any team, but the Lakers were kind of his team for a while. Then he kind of fell out of basketball. So I grew up by the, in a, you know, I was born in 88. So by that time he wasn't really rooting for basketball teams anymore. He was, mm -hmm he kind of shifted his focus to baseball and football. And uh, I didn't really have a team growing up. I, I felt like I was rooting for whoever I was playing in NBA Jam. Uh, and then one, <laughs> one day my uncle and aunt uh, wanted to take me to a Spurs game with my cousin because they, they were Spurs fans. Uh, and I have a, a really shitty like Kodak photo I took of it, um, of, of the floor. And you see like Dave Robinson and Tim Duncan. So I know it was definitely like oh, wow. 98, 99. Yeah. Nice. Um, Avery Johnson, Sean Elliott. Uh, that that was like my first NBA game ever, and uh, my first exposure to okay, this is going to be my team now, you know. And then from then on, you know, you're you're a kid playing basketball in your front yard or your backyard or at your friend's house, and it's like, all right, I'll be Avery Johnson. You'll be right. You know, you'll yeah, be you'll whoever. There. You'll be David Robinson, and then and then it you know it turned into Tony Parker and Tim Duncan and all that stuff. So. That's where that's where my sort of fandom comes from, and then you know, I Ginobili just sort of changed the game for me and showed me. Uh, I uh, not only changed the game for me, but changed the game from the NBA. I think. Oh, and, absolutely. And I think he's one of like the most uh, one of the most influential players in the NBA, um, and so he became he's my favorite player of all time, and so that's where the uh, the obsession comes with. Um, so I grew up with a lot of. I grew up being spoiled a lot, you know, like the Spurs were always winning. The Atlanta Braves were always winning. The Cowboys, not so much, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah. Were, were you from, like, Spurs country in Texas, or were you, like, more like Mavericks or Rockets land? Because I no. know, like, none of those teams like each other, so it's all regional, I guess. But were you from Spurs country? No, I mean, I, I'd say most fans where I am from are Spurs fans. Um, most people in the, in the Rio Grande Valley, right on the border, on the South border. Um, and, and the fan base really sort of mirrors the fan base in San Antonio where it's like 90% Hispanics, it, you know, it's all just a bunch of Brown people in the stands. And it's like, I think we all just sort of found that sort of common ground with each other. Um, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't really think I grew up with around a lot of Mavericks fans, even though we were all Cowboys fans. I think just because I grew up in an era where the Spurs were winning rings, all we heard about was the Spurs. Fair enough. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's um, 
you know, most most people don't have like three teams in their state to pick from. But yeah, oh, at the sure. end of the day, it's really just broken down by where, where you're from. So yeah, absolutely. You know, but, I mean, you lucked out there because, like you said, like you alluded to, they've been uh, they've been really good damn near your whole life, and you know, not always winning the title, but they got what five rings since yeah. now and then, and That's always why I'm just, know, competitive and w- winning record. You know, it's I'm hard happy hard that to they were that. relevant for 20 years in sort of like. They were relevant during the prime years of my life where I was hardcore. I mean, I'm still a hardcore fan, but like I always think about all the times the Cowboys won the Super Bowl and I was way too young to really give a shit, mm-hmm. you know. Um right, the 90s team. I was five, six years old when they were winning their rings. Um, but the fact that the Spurs got to win when I was 18 years old uh in 07, and then, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of years ago in 2014. Oh, yeah. You know, it's been it's been awesome. Now it's wild. Like, would any, well, what would what would the odds have been that out of Duncan, Parker, Ginobili, and Kawhi, Ginobili's the last one standing? That that's insane to me. It's really bizarre, yeah. Because I remember, you know, I mean, the same thing was sort of said about Duncan for five years, where it's like, oh, this is the last year, and then he'd have a resurgence, and it's like, I still think Duncan could go on any team and get you ten and ten, like, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, it's it, the same could be said for Ginobili, where it, it always felt like the last year. It always felt like we were getting there. Uh, and um, I mean, he hasn't fully committed right to this season. I don't think he's he's not signed. No, no like, he's not. signed. Seems like he's coming back. Um, I think he's I coming back. He yeah, I, I think mean, he's coming back. I mean, to your point about them always being you know in the mix, I I think we'll get to the trade, but like I think they're going to be competitive and good still. So I don't think that oh sure that I think it's going be, away anytime soon. Yeah, I think they'll be a six seed. I think uh, I think just with that Spurs culture there, you know, uh, that's a lot of like the stuff that I kind of roll my eyes at, like the intangibles, and I'm like, <laughs> look, either you got good players or you don't. But I think there is just something so mystifying and magical about what. RC and Pop have sort of cultivated there, and so I, I think they're going to be fine. They, you know, nobody's going to win. <laughs> nobody's going to beat the Warriors anyway. So who gives a shit? But mm-hmm. it's still, you know, I'm still invested, and I still, I still give a shit. So yeah, I mean, they made they made the playoffs pretty pretty handily with nine games from Kawhi Leonard, you know, and the yeah. Marcus was an All NBA player, and now you're adding Demar Derozan, another All NBA player. So. In theory, that's two of the top fifteen guys in the league as of last season. So yeah, most, it'll it'll, it'll definitely most teams can't say they have that much talent. So yeah, you know. I'm excited. And I think I think the young guys are gonna. I think Dejounte and uh, and even um, Lonnie Walker. Uh, well, yeah, Lonnie Walker for sure. That's I'm really excited about that pick. But I think um, who's oh god, who was their first round first rounder from last year? Um, Derek White. Yeah, Derek, uh, he's yeah. under the radar. I like yeah, I see a lot of upside with him. I think he he came into the league having a shot, and now it's just all about sort of the intangible Spurs sort of mm-hmm. you know don't dribble the ball, pass first sort of mentality. I'm I'm really excited to see how they develop. And honestly, it's like it is um it's gonna sound like a total load of load of bullshit from me, but I assure you, I'm telling the truth. It's gonna be refreshing to watch a team that isn't like stacked anymore and is going to be kind of fighting on the brink because last year it didn't feel that way because i knew oh Kawhi will be back that's how i felt all season Kawhi will be back back yeah yeah so this one i don't know i'm interested to see like what it feels to be like a fucking grizzlies fan or like (laughs) anybody who's like look we're not you know we'll probably make the playoffs we're not going to make a whole lot of noise but i'm just excited to see sort of this new class um grow you know with the with the coaching staff and you know i think we got maybe two or three more years of pop um and so i'm excited what he can teach them and you know hopefully what advice he can give them in the next couple of years yeah no i agree and a lot of people were saying oh pop this will be his last year he'll do team usa the year after and then he'll be done but you know i don't know it seems like as long as the team is you know competitive and a winning team that he doesn't seem far away. I mean, he likes talking uh, to the media, you know, about non-basketball things. So I don't know if he would just throw away the platform. And I, you know, he did that, you know, thing with his wife. Uh, she passed away, right? Like, so he he did have some uh, personal troubles, but he seems to be in as good spirits as ever. And he was really cordial about Kawhi Leonard uh, today when 
the trade actually was announced and made official. So yeah, I think it's still a pop for a while. And I mean, you know, you'd sign up for that as much as possible, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, let's get into this trade shit. <laughs> All right. So the trade, uh, for, I mean, I'm sure everyone was watching already is aware, but Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green, who opted into his uh, player option. So he was a one year, de- one year left on his contract, just like Kawhi. Kawhi and Danny Green and a, uh, are going to Toronto Raptors for DeMar DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and a protected first-round pick, protected 1 through 20, which, uh, assuming the Raptors are still competitive, uh, that'll convey to the Spurs and, you know, mid-20s pick. So, uh, in, you know, in recent, recent days, the past week or so, Brian Windhorst, Zach Lowe, they were saying that the Raptors' noise was legit, sounded like Philly and L.A., you know, kind of given up. They didn't want to give up the high price that the Spurs were willing to pay, and you know, by all accounts, they weren't the Spurs. You know, didn't want a pick slate and package. They wanted tangible uh, players back. And you know, getting Demar Derozan, getting a you know one of the what the second best shooting guard in the game, best depending on how you how do you grade it. You know, I mean, what's a shooting guard anyway? But one of the best guards in the game, um, back for a player that doesn't want to stay on your team long term. Um, you know, I thought it was a good trade for both sides, honestly. But what, what did you think? I mean, we've known I... this trade was happening for a while. You know, just uh, trade of some some manner. But now that it finally happened with Toronto, all of a sudden, yeah, what, what did you feel like when you saw that either last night or this morning? It was yeah, it was last night because I I was uh, I stayed up late because I had to screwed up an edit for my real job, <laughs> and I had to go back to the office. And on the way back, I had uh, when I got part to my car, I saw the the Woj bomb of like, all right, they're finalizing mm-hmm. this tweet. Or they're finalizing this deal, and I was like, "All right, it's gonna happen." Wow, I I was just so stoked that it happened. It's just like I wanted to get him out of here as soon as possible. I was so worried about his trade value. I was so worried about what we might get back. It was it almost became sort of doom and gloom for me, where it's like, "All right, we're not gonna get any of the you know the Lakers don't want to give up Kuzma or Hart or Ingram." Okay. Um, like they, I guess the Spurs wanted maybe two of the big of those sort of big young guys, but right. they weren't willing to give that up. And the at the end of the day, the Lakers know. Look, he's coming. He's coming to us next year anyway. So either you, either we give you a couple of picks, and you give us Kawhi, or we'll get him next year. It doesn't matter to us. And it's like uh, the the Spurs were sort of hand, uh, you know, handcuffed at that moment. And I was. I, I thought it was. I thought we were going to get screwed. I legitimately thought we were going to end up not being able to trade with anybody and hold on to Kawhi, and he was going to sit out. Uh, so I was really, really bummed out about what was going on because mm-hmm. I know, like you know, Philly and uh, you know, Philly didn't want to give up Simmons or anybody. It's like they didn't even want to give up Markel Fultz. Yeah. So. so I, I, it was sort of doom and gloom for me, and I think we totally came away with some high ray robbery shit right there. Like yeah. I, I thought at most we'd get, I don't know, a random, uh, you know, role player and a couple of firsts, but the fact that we could get a first along with DeMar DeRozan, I don't know really much about Jakob, um, but you know, I'm, I'm just so stoked that we were able to get somebody and mm-hmm. I just, <laughs> I just love like, I love the pettiness of it. It's yeah, so okay. great. I, I'm so happy that it happened the way it did because I, it's gotten to the point where I'm just like I'm just fed up with fucking Uncle Dennis, man. I'm fed up with the, with Kawhi and his uncle. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, he's he, he reminded me he's act the way he has been acting. I guess it reminds me of like Mello at the end of the Nuggets days or something where for it's sure. like mm-hmm. he's acting as if he's been there for ten years and the the and they've done nothing for him, so he wants out. But like you have a ring, you have a Finals MVP, you have one of the best coaches, you have a structure and a culture there, and it's all it, the your future is so bright. Um, and maybe your knee hurt, sure. Maybe your maybe your maybe your leg was you know fucked up, and you you couldn't come back even though you were cleared multiple times. Not as bad as Tony Parker's injury, though. Not as bad as Tony Parker's, yeah. And he got stabbed in the eye too. Um, <laughs> Or whatever the fuck happened. I remember he got like in a club. Didn't he get stabbed or some shit? 
yeah, he's had some weird like shit going on with girlfriends and stuff. Like Tony, got Tony's the, personal life questionable. Yeah, he got hit in the eye at a club at a concert, did he not? Like he almost went blind. I think so. Yeah. Somebody like broke a glass or a glass bottle and like he fucked up his eye and it was like, wow, he almost lost his whole eyeball. But like I don't know. I it immediately red flags popped up for me where I'm like, look, mm-hmm. he's. A lot of people are blaming the Spurs for this, for sort of putting him on blast. But it's like, look, when the media is asking you every day, what's up with Kawhi? Yeah. At a no certain point, anymore. after 100 times getting asked that, you got to say, look, we cleared him. Ask him, you know, like we, we, there's yeah. nothing for us to say. I agree. You know, I mean, to a lot of your points, I mean, I have no problem with a player wanting to leave, wanting to leave a team. You want to go to a bigger mark? You want to be a bigger star? Fine. That that's perfectly uh, reasonable. I think he's like, yeah, I don't get a big shoe contract. They're offering me twenty million. I mean, I know John Wall in the past complained about you know shoe deals, and you know if that's your thing, you're, you're a great player. I uh, want top five players in the league when healthy. Yeah, I Max, understand. That's yeah, maximize but the thing your that potential. I, maximize your money now. Absolutely. And like, but the thing, and like, yeah, you even want to express you want to get traded. Fine, but to to, to fish for doctor opinions. So that you can just keep not playing, just go totally radio silent, and you're already a quiet guy. That's not that's not you know a fault, but you're not one to communicate much, right? So the fact that you're just gonna, you know, sit out the whole season for a minor injury, maybe not minor. I mean, he has this has been a history with him this injury flaring up. So, you know, I, I understand maybe he wants to be cautious with himself, but when you've been cleared months, you know, months ago, and then to just totally be away from the team like we're really like really set in for me it was like the spurs in the playoffs and you're not going to be there on the bench you're not gonna play fine but then he won't even send like a social media video hey guys i'm training in new york go spurs go you know like a simple thing the spurs socialist team would have helped you do it but just to totally quit on the team it's like i mean how could you fault pop for saying how it is or parker you know being pretty blunt like he quit on the team and he didn't have to do that. If he wanted to leave, fine. But the fact that he wanted to force himself out this early, like, sorry, like, it's just being a bad teammate, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it really changed a lot of people's opinions of the guy. And, you know, I mean, we had no reason to dislike him at all before fucking Uncle Dennis, you know? It's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's weird. I, I do think that, uh, I do think that his management group wants more than maybe he actually wants. I, it, it's sort of this weird thing where I'm like, who, who Stuff are the enough. puppets pulling these strings? I don't know. I I really don't. There's a part of me that really doesn't think he wants this sort of thing to happen. Um, maybe he doesn't want to play in as in as in San Antonio, but I don't think. I don't like. There were reports that he was annoyed in Las Vegas. It's like good fucking luck being in L.A. Like that he was annoyed by the hustle and bustle of of Las Vegas yeah, and it being. Come on, no like, luck. <laughs> you're you're you want. It's, I you can't even comment on it because it's like, what do you want? You know, <laughs> like you don't talk, so we don't really know what you want when we're trying to comment on what we think you want, but really you don't. I don't even know if you know what you want, sort of thing. It's just, it's so mystifying and mind-boggling, man. And if that's true, that like the hub 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 wasn't wasn't what he wanted, you're gonna join up with LeBron James. His team is a circus all the time. Both yeah, the good and the bad. Like you're gonna, there's so much pressure to be playing with LeBron, even when you're not the best player. You can ask Kevin Love that. You can ask Jay Crowder that. You know, like it's it's tough. And Las Vegas was giving you trouble. Well, now you're gonna get the six and the yeah. six. Uh, you know, the Raptors fans, they're uh, they're a loyal bunch. They're they're nuts. Oh, absolutely. So, but that, I just I, and, I just love know. that petty move of like we're not gonna send you where you want. Sorry, dude. Yes. Sunny LA? Nah, you go into fucking Yeah, tundra, we're man. not going to send you within conference. You're not doing what we want, so we're not going to do what you want. Literally Peace out the of the country. <laughs> Later, dog. You know, like, and I, I, I'm so happy it happened that way. Yeah. Um, just because it's there's that petty piece inside me that's just like, go to hell, dude. <laughs> and yeah. I shouldn't feel that way because he was a great player for us and he delivered, you know, he helped win us a ring, but it's like, man, I don't, it just reminds me of like when a when a significant other falls out of love and doesn't really have a reason to it's just kind of like i'm done with this and you're like but why you know it was it tony parker and his comments was it pops like what do you mean lo- you're saying you're losing trust in the organization 
like yeah, that's wild. really how can we how could the spurs trust you you know i don't know it's just it's so bizarre man and it's the you know pop at the press conference this morning was very you know he's very mild mannered and he was very chill about it but like they haven't experienced anything like this since what since duncan wanting to go to the magic like right yeah this that is, was close like, to this, people realized too this is so out of the norm for them and that franchise and it's bizarre for them to deal with because they're just like look you, people love pop people love playing for one of the best coaches ever why would you want to leave this sort of thing um mm -hmm. it, i don't know it's just so bizarre to me that um i guess his management group maybe he wants to be the star maybe he didn't want it maybe it was like a uh a, a um oh god what's his that was his face in um in portland how you didn't want to play with uh, lamarcus Damian Lillard. Oh, Damian Lillard, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's one of those situations where he didn't want to share the ball a whole lot, where he wanted to be the primary star. But I don't know. I There are reports that he wants to go to the Clippers, possibly, because maybe he doesn't yeah. want to be with the L.A. Circus. Yeah, just L.A. itself, not necessarily the Lakers. And it's tough, right. again, it's tough to really know what's him, what's his team, what's legit, what's not. But, I mean, again, like, you know, to your point, like, why would you want to leave the Spurs? Even if you did want to leave the Spurs... You don't do it this way. You don't quit on the team yeah. and just bullshit the whole season. That that it, just turns everybody off. It would be one yeah. thing if he was like a TO type, like outspoken yeah. superstar diva right. that wants to go to LA. Then I'd be like, hey, I get it. Have fun in LA. But it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, he's such a quiet dude who never talks and you never can know or gauge how he's feeling at any moment. So right. this is like such a weird, it seems so out of the norm for him, but I mean, you know, LA is his home or San Diego. Right. Um, but I don't know. It's still really, really bizarre for me. And I mean, even if he wants to like have a, a bigger profile to get a, like a better shoe deal and other things like his personality is not going to make him more popular. There's a reason he's not a, a top Jersey seller. He's not as fun to watch as watch as a Russell Westbrook to most kids, despite the fact that he's better than Russell Westbrook. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, he's not flashy and I don't know why he cares so much about the shoe deal. I mean, you're not getting a big, big deal with all the other guys you're competing with. There's only so much money from Adidas and Nike and whatnot. So you were going to get a super max deal from San Antonio. If you stayed, you're going to get fucking top, top dollar and you eventually become overpaid as you got old. Yeah. So just the fact that that amount of money wasn't good enough. You want to leave the situation that's so stable that where you always win it's just so strange but again my, my big thing is just the way you went about it but you know i mean you mentioned like you're worried about you know just kind of in this malaise that you're you know the, the return wouldn't be good and i think that was the right you know thing to feel i mean there was talk that they would drag it into the start of the season or wait till the deadline i mean look what paul george returned uh oladipo was not a high asset when he was traded you know high value look what boogie got he got buddy healed in a pick you know, look what Jimmy Butler got. You know, um, yeah, those stars are great don't, points. Yeah, don't we could have gotten more value Royce. when you trade them. So the fact yeah. that you got another star player, not as good star player, assumingly, but you still got someone that you can immediately use and keep you competitive. I mean, I feel like you got to be about to be stoked, man. Oh, and yeah, the fact absolutely. that it was done in a petty way, sending Kawhi away, I feel like it's kind of a home run. Oh, I love it. Like Brandon Ingram wasn't realistic, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, I you know, I, there's a part of me that would have loved to have gotten either Ingram and a bunch of picks or whatever, just to sort of see that re that refresh or heart and a couple of picks or who's mm -hmm. a couple of picks. But uh, this deal not only keeps them away from the Lakers, but it keeps them out of the Western conference. Um, and I think, I think keeping them away for the Lakers was a bigger deal than keeping him out of the Western conference um, for at least another year. Um, but the Lakers will be good again, and it sucks. <laughs> it was a fun run. We had a yeah. fun run with them being bad for a while. Um, Fans are back. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're back. <laughs> they're back. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 excited about what we have now, and I'm excited to see what they can build on. And I'll be tuning in every night like I always do, and just watching regular season ga season games and trying to see, uh, uh, you know, what can be done and what can be salvaged this season, but. Man, I'll tell you, I'm way more bummed about Danny Green leaving. I feel like I was one of the only Danny Green fans in this first fan base. 
yeah, I saw Chris Vernon uh, tweeted. He was like, Danny Green, like, yo, what did I do? <laughs> you know? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, it bums me out, man. I, I love that. I feel like Danny Green is sort of treated the way Romo was treated by a lot of Cowboys fans where like you either love him or you hate him. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, he gets sort of the blame for a lot of stuff, but I love Danny. I thought he was a fun, I think he's, I, he's one of the guys that will get his Jersey retired or not retired, but you know, he'll be, he'll be on the Spurs, like ring of honor or whatever. Yeah. I think. A ceremony of sorts. Yeah. I, th I think he's that, he was that sort of, um, impact caliber player for the Spurs all those years. I think he was a phenomenal the ring. Player, super underrated defensive player. Yeah, that's um, the thing. Like, I, I, yeah, I wasn't aware that like Spurs fans were so like 50-50 uh, on him just because his defense is not quite as good as it once was, but he's still a 3 and D wing, something every team needs more of. You know, he's a valuable uh, player, valuable, you know, archetype. And if it wasn't for the lack of cap space, uh, you know, cap smoothing and not but people had space, he probably would have opted out and got a big deal from someone just because you know his services would have been in demand. So I, I, you know, think I thought him was, opting in was a good deal for you guys, but then you know I guess Toronto, you know, really wanted him. I don't know. Yeah, there was there was a recent. I remember during the season he he had he became one of four people along with like Duncan Robinson and somebody else of like points and blocks or something like that in a Spurs career. I was like, wow, like you, you don't, it's easy to overlook that sort of those numbers. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to miss the hell out of him. I thought he was a phenomenal like teammate to all the guys. And uh, um, he, he just had like the right attitude. That's the one that I was most bummed out about. I went to sleep before the trade was fully finalized and it was only Kawhi and the Raptors. And I woke up and I saw Spurs Instagram saying, thank you, Danny Green. And my heart dropped. It's like, no, man, like I fucking love Danny Green. Uh, yeah, I'm going to miss his shooting and his defensive presence for sure, man. Yeah, I th think you'll like Pirtle. You know, he's he. when I saw him in the trade, I was like, oh, wow, that is, that's a Spurs guy. You know, he's a European big man. He's a pretty skilled offensively, can move the ball. You know, he's not going to guard on the perimeter for you, but and he's not like an amazing like banger of the boards. But I feel like the pop will really quickly carve out a role for him. Oh, and I think sure. he's, this will be his third year. He, he was a back-end lottery pick for the Raptors, so he was pretty pretty well-touted. But, you know, DeMar DeRozan, I mean, fuck, imagine him with Chip England, you know? Yeah, could be, seriously. Could, could be something. I would, yeah, because I hit, I mean, DeMar DeRozan's primarily what, like just a, a mid-ranger, sort of like LaMarcus? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, it's really funny thinking of him and LaMarcus together because it's really a th two throwback players because DeRozan, has finally started to shoot threes, but he's not amazing at it. He's not, you know, he, he especially in crunch time, he usually tends away from it. But yeah, he gets to the rack. He gets like eight free throw attempts a game. He's he's a lethal scorer in the mid range and by getting getting to the line, like you know, like a Harden, I guess, but without the threes. And DeRozan's really interesting just because his footwork. There's a lot of good, really good pieces about his footwork being really great. How he modeled it after Kobe, but then he didn't stop there. He's really improved his craft every year and it's funny because you know he didn't used to be this this effective and now he's you know 23 25 point game scorer and having him with lamarcus aldridge like a pick and pop big that demar never really played with i'm actually really intrigued to see you know how pop makes this work and uh he also gets you know giante murray helping him on the defensive end and derozan's no slouch on defense either so i think you know it's a uh, actually really tantalizing uh you know roster for the spurs so yeah i'm excited yeah, I, I'd be see, stoked. i'm really excited to see Dejounte uh evolve and i know that he's been like apparently working on his shooting a lot which is i think one of the only weaknesses in his game i, or, I mean yeah. i think he needs to work on his passing a little bit more too but as far as like getting to the rim and getting boards and playing defense yeah. he's such a long one, dude one of the top um, rebounding guards yeah yeah absolutely i can't wait to, I, the ceiling is so high for that kid i can't wait um yeah, the, and Lonnie and funny, if you, <laughs> Oh, dude. If you if you look at the draft for where Giante was taken, again, like a late twenties pick, you know, typical for the Spurs, he's like the best guy taken in like a sixteen pick range. He was like the ultimate diamond in the rough in a week back half of the first round. It was great pick by the Spurs. And yeah, fucking Lonnie Walker. Like I, I did a mock draft and I had him going to the Clippers, like eleven twelve. And the fact that you got him in like was it like eighteen or something like that, total steal and you know, true like blue chip talent that 
you guys just never draft because you're not drafting that high. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Normally we're in the high twenties, <laughs> mid to high twenties. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the Kyle Anderson trade was interesting. I, I, um, or, or him just leaving, right. Him leaving. Right. Um, yeah, I signed the offer sheet with the Grizzlies. Yeah. I, um, uh, I'm glad they didn't match. I, I'm, I, I enjoyed watching him. I, I thought he was a decent player, but <laughs> yeah, he reminds me of, um, Oh God, what's his that's his name? I can't remember his name. Super short power forward that we had in like uh, the Gary Neal years. Oh, um not Matt Bonner. No, 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 no. Um ah, it's Gary his name Neal is Gary, Neal. <laughs> Gary Neal. Yeah, man. Remember that? Remember that year? <laughs> one of the one of the legendary Spurs I'll players that got way worse. Gary Neal left. game against Chris Paul and the Clippers. Yeah. Where he like hit two incredible threes and a steal for a three. It was like ridiculous. And Gary Neal almost became a legend in that 2013 finals, man. Um, oh god, I, I gotta figure it out. Let me let me just type in uh in my computer 2010 Spurs. I'm sure it'll pop up. No, I wasn't that early. Maybe 2013. Let's see. I mean, yeah, and you still got Patty Mills there, of course. Bellinelli came back. Um I'm happy Billy's Davis. back. I, I always loved him. I always liked Bell and Signed Bertans to a really team friendly deal, four years twenty. Uh, he's a I nice, thought, nice I thought find that was for changed. the team. I thought four I thought four years twenty was the initial offer, and then it ended up becoming like two fourteen. Oh, you might be right. I think that's what happened. Yeah, oh, that... Dewan Blair. Oh, Dewan Blair. Dewan <laughs> yeah. Blair. That, that's who <laughs> Kyle Anderson's kind of that caliber of player. It's like. Look, you can leave, and I won't really miss you, but I'm happy you were here. <laughs> Why the, yeah, the time like, you were here? It's funny. Like the Grizzlies fans are so stoked that they got Kyle Anderson, and they just got Garrett Temple from the Kings. It's like, hey, we got useful players. We're back, <laughs> baby. And I'm like, I get it, but who are we talking about here? Like Kyle Anderson is slow as fuck, hence the name. Yeah, like, he's a useful wing, but. I feel like when you have him out there, you're like, ah, we could do a little better, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, of course. I be, mean, I be, he's another guy to watch. How does he fare away from Pop and Spurs, you know? We'll see, man. Well, also, like, isn't a... I'm interested to see what Tony does with the Bobcats, just to sort of... Like, what the hell's going to happen there? You know? Hornets, uh, you're rather. You're right about Bertans, by the way. Two years, 14.5, which is... Two fourteen, yeah. Yeah, so um, so Tony yeah. so Tony's uh, uh, reuniting with um, former assistant coach James Borrego, which is sort of a thing that I forgot about because I was like, why do the Hornets want Tony? You know, and then it was like, oh, James Borrego, former assistant coach, go into this. Right. That's right. I mean, it, it made I sense. Thing, to me. I didn't verify this, but I saw a thing going around that he wanted to be with Charlotte because they have direct flights to Paris. You know, East Coast city. <laughs> yes. But I do not understand the appeal for the Hornets. Like Tony staying with the Spurs, fine. You know, he has his moments for the team. He, he's a great locker room presence, the history, fine. But why? what need does the Hornets have for an old point guard that's lost several steps and that was never a shooter in the first place? Like, what, what purpose does he serve for your team? Especially if you might move Kemba Walker. Like, I just don't, I, I don't see the appeal for them, but. I mean, I, I think it was more of a move from James Borrego wanting to say, let's, you know, I'm coming here for Spurs culture. Let me bring in somebody else to sort of, you sure. know, lead the put team. The, yeah, Help. put this flag in the dirt and say, look, we're bringing in a new winning attitude in here. Fair but enough. At the end of the day, the Warriors ruined it. So who cares? Did you, did you, how'd you feel when you saw Tony left? Um, honestly, kind of indifferent. Like, I don't know why it didn't impact me as much as like as it would if Manu left. Interesting. Um, when Tony left, I was like, eh, you know, I kind of get it. We, you know, you wanted more than we were willing to give you. Um, I, which is weird because they gave Pau Gasol fuckloads. Yeah. So what's we, what we the talked hell? about that when that happened? The Pau deal was really perplexing. Yeah, and it still is. And I, yeah, I never got that one. I never got that one. Um, so that one sucks. <laughs> but yeah, so with Tony, see, Tony leaving, I was very indifferent to it. I was just like, interesting. it's going to be weird to see him in a different uniform, but that's kind of all I feel right now. Like, I'm not bummed right. out by any means. So he wasn't like Danny Green to you. That's interesting. 
No, well, I, well, you know, maybe Tony six years ago leaving, I would have been bummed out, um, right. Right. a lot more sad. But I know that he's at the end of his career, and I'd I'd rather him retire. But he wants to keep playing, so get your money, keep playing. Yeah, not to blame, I guess. Yeah, if he was thirty years old, I would have been extremely bummed out. Um, but you know, he's what 36, 37? Yeah, he's he, he don't have much left. No, not at all, <laughs> not at all. And I saw it, like I I watched it, I. I I was I watched almost every regular season game, and it's like uh, his drives to the hoop and his spin move and his like he was having to use a lot more hesitation moves to sort of get his uh, buckets. Right. When early on, it was just his speed. Exactly, <laughs> and it's like you sort of you definitely saw him evolve his game to where it's like. Well, I'm not fast enough, so I got to figure out something else out. But he also just lost his jump shot. Like he was always a decent mid-range yeah, jump shooter, the mid-range, yeah. And it just like was gone. He would miss right. them all the time. The, the the legs weren't there anymore. No, I mean he had ceded his starting job during the season to Gian- Deontay just because. Yeah. I don't think he could, you know, with a straight face say I'm still a, a starter in caliber guard. You know. Totally. Yeah. So. Totally. I mean, kudos to him for at least realizing that, I guess. In but, a very Spurs way, just saying, hey, I get it. You know, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, well. So, you know, another thing that's been going around today, a lot of players have chimed in on this since I think it's been a TV talking point, is like the whole loyalty angle where DeMar was under the impression he wasn't going to get traded and he posted some IG stories and he was not not happy about this. He was someone who had expressed a desire to be a lifelong raptor he wanted to go down as the greatest raptor and you know he's always worked hard his craft got in the gym after he got that big deal and he never wanted to leave and he never even took a meeting with other teams yet Masai Ujiri the GM he, he saw I think a smart move to get Kawhi and if Kawhi leaves you can reset your roster towards a retooling with that young young bench, bench pod they have and he moved DeMar DeRozan probably because no one wants Kyle Lowry so how'd you feel about that? Like, do, do, are you someone who believes in like the loyalty angle? Because I've yeah. been I've been pretty jaded with it ever since like Isaiah Thomas got got stabbed in the back, technically whatever. Blake Griffin, same deal. Like players, when players uh, aren't loyal, everyone shits on them. But when the teams aren't loyal to the players, it's just good business. Oh yeah, it's so the like, same what, thing. What, what am I missing here? It's the same thing in the NFL where you know like. You, uh, you know, players might want to stay somewhere and they're loyal to the team, but it's like, no, you are a pawn in this huge machine and we want your, we want your broken bruised body out of here, even though you want to stay and the fans love you. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really too phased by this whole loyalty thing. I, DeMar. It's just weird that so many people still believe it. Like, it's yeah, just, it's not, it's yeah, not yeah. realistic. It's a business. But it could be it. two. Th- it could be both things. It could be that hey, maybe the Raptors were really trying to trade Kyle, and they were saying, "Hey, uh, Demar, you're not on the offer sheet. Don't worry about it. We're maybe trading. We're trying to get a trade for Kyle Lowry, maybe." And him saying, "Okay," but then when the day came and you know they figured out, holy shit, the Spurs are willing to give us Kawhi for Demar. Right. Maybe it shifted right then and there. You know, it's. I don't know. I don't. I think because we aren't, we're unable to see all things happening. That maybe we don't know the full story. But I, you know, maybe they told him one thing, and we're expecting that one thing to happen. It's right. sort of like, uh, you know what? It's sort of like No Man's Sky. <laughs> maybe, maybe Next update Tuesday. <laughs> maybe they were, you know, they had all these plans, and they just didn't pan out. You know, that's what I think probably happened with, with Demar Derozan. I don't think they outright lied to him. I think. Sure. It could be that they wanted this thing to happen and they didn't think they would trade him. But at the end of the day, they ended up having to do it. So, fuck, you know, they did what's best for their franchise or what they think is what's best. But, man, right. I have so many Raptors fans in my mentions being like, I hate this. Like, we're losing a loyal dude who loves this city, who is like right. sort of the child of Toronto. And we are getting a dude who doesn't want to be here and who's going to be a one year rental. This sucks. Right, and I feel for and, them, man. And because Toronto has not been a free agent destination, despite being a really a city really on the rise and becoming more, you know, well known thanks to Drake, I guess. Like they, you know, th- this is their best stretch ever in franchise history. This is better than the Bosch years, and a lot of those fans, they're kind of like Grizzlies fans, I guess. It's like they they know that they're probably they're not title contenders. They're probably if they if they didn't do this trade. They're probably what the third best team in the East still behind Boston and Philly, like. They know they're not bad in those teams, but they also probably know that 
sending Lowry and DeRozan out there with this group is still kind of diminishing returns. But I'm seeing this thing that's like, you know, you fired a coach a year, you traded Mr. Raptor. I'm like, but it, it is kind of smart business. Like you do understand that angle to it, right, guys? Like, like no one wants Lowry, who's six feet six feet tall and thirty two years old and makes thirty million dollars. So you totally have totally on the back end of his career. Yeah, like, and he's still he good and useful, but he's not an all star anymore. Okay. And Abaka's really fallen off, and you have those two dudes and DeRozan, but then you also have the, all these young guys like Fred Van Vliet and Delon Wright and OG Ananobi, who you didn't trade, and uh, Pirtle's one of those guys, but you moved him, but you still have those guys, and you know Masai able to move off DeRozan's money. I feel like this is a win win for the Raptors because either they convince Kawhi to stay, a la Paul George, you know, you get wrapped up in the six and Drake and everyone loving you and you stay. And it, either way, assuming he plays and doesn't sit out, you Kawhi Leonard Lowry in that deep team, they'll make a run to Eastern Conference Finals, potentially, potentially make the finals, you know? So you have that. Oh, and then yeah. you have to reset the team and, you know, not just totally fuck up a tank, you know? So. I think it's smart. It's just it, I understand that it hurts when like your favorite player, the best Raptor ever, is moving as a result. You know, I think, uh, yeah, I think that they could probably win the Eastern Conference with Kawhi if he cares and if he plays. Because I mean, they they probably should have done it last year with the, you know how well they're doing in the regular season. But as history has shown, like Kyle and Demar just kind of disappear in the playoffs. <laughs> And they also always meet LeBron James. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. As soon as you, wherever, whoever gets guarded by LeBron, like when he cares about defending, it reminds me of like Kobe in his later years where people, he was still winning like defensive team, like players of the year, or he was still on like all team defense. It's like, well, he's not very good anymore, but it's kind of like just, you know, his, uh, I I don't know, like you're still kind of giving him these awards, but when he cares about defending, he will make you disappear. Um, and I think it reminds me of, um, what does it remind me of? Um, I don't know, like replacing uh, the, the Warriors getting Durant and replacing... Um, Harrison Barnes. Yeah, Harrison Barnes. It's like, you're, <laughs> this is obviously like a huge upgrade. Uh, <laughs> and you were already really good. So getting Kawhi in the mix, getting his defense and his late game clutch ability... Um, I think it's just like, I, I hope they do well next year, but, uh, and I think I'll be semi rooting for Kawhi just cause he's not with the Lakers. Right. And you know, the thing with the Lakers thing, just like we thought Paul George was a foregone conclusion to sign with the Lakers, you know, a few weeks ago, maybe Kawhi likes Toronto. Maybe he goes somewhere else. Cause he ain't the only top free agent next year. KD and Kyrie Irving will opt out and be free agents. Jimmy Butler will be there. Uh, Kawhi, Kevin Love, um, Kemba Walker. There's a lot of uh, Clay Thompson. There's a lot of big names available, and a, a few of those will be on the move. So, and uh, even Boogie Cousins, you know, pending his health. So, there's a lot of um, a lot of guys that can go to LA besides just Kawhi. So, you know, perhaps he won't get his wish. Maybe he'll go to the Clippers. I don't know. But God, it's gonna be so funny when he like he has to sit there and realize, fuck, I gotta play this out. I can't. I can't hurt my value anymore by sitting out a year like this is the fucking NFL, you know? Yeah. I mean, his what his his, how much how many millions has he lost out on? Well, he he threw away like $80 million by walking away from the San Antonio Supermax. And now, you know, I think the biggest deal that he can be offered by the Raptors or any other teams like 140 as opposed to like the 220, you know, the total length of the deal. So he threw away a lot of money. Not that he's, you know, going to get a small deal or anything, but. Yeah, it's it's perplexing. You know, it's funny. I was doing research on Kawhi, like his like accolades and stuff. Did you know he was only an All Star twice? Does that sound weird? Um, no, because of how the Spurs share the ball. I'm not too shocked by that. Right. Like I, I I remember no like you know the year after the Spurs won the championship, it's like oh they have an All Star on the like you know they're one of the best teams. They have one of the best records. And it seems like they always have one of the best records, yet they only have maybe one All Star at right. most. And it's yeah. because all of them, you know, it, you look at the box scores, and it's like, oh, there was you know eight players in double figures. Yeah. Uh, the most the, the player with the most points was like Kawhi, and maybe he was, I don't know, twenty one and 
12 or whatever. And the next player was LaMarcus who was 19 and 11 or something, you know, like that's just how their box scores have looked for forever. So I'm not too shocked by that. Uh, yeah, but the, the first year he won defensive player of the year, 2015, he wasn't even an all-star that year. That's wild. <laughs> that's Dude, fucking back wild. to back defensive player of the year, three first team all defenses, two all-stars, obviously the finals MVP. And now he's going to be, what is he? 20. He just turned 27. Yeah. So, you know, assuming this injury stuff is behind him, but not this was not an out of the blue injury. He did have this part of his body get hurt before, but assuming he can get past that, obviously he'll still be in demand. And you know, I would like to see him get back to that top, you know, top five talent. Just no, did this great for, great for the NBA. Did this span from uh, from the Golden State injury from Jaja? No, I think that's different. But this this injury happened, I think, in 2012, briefly. He, if you look it up, he's actually missed more games in his career than Anthony Davis has in terms of like total missed games, in terms of possible games played. And like, you wouldn't think that, like, oh, AD, he's great, but he gets hurt sometimes. But AD never really had like a major injury. Kawhi is now fucking, he'll tell you, major injury, missed a whole season because of it, you know? So it's weird that he's not as durable as we always thought. I just, yet, you know, Dave, because you know, he always bounced back and was still an all first team, all defense caliber player. You know, I guess he never, we never really thought of it that way. You know, I just remember watching these damn interviews of him and him saying, yeah, feeling good, feeling good. Should be good. Should be back, you know, a couple weeks. Yes. I want to be a Spurs for the rest of my life. You, you goddamn liar. You looked me in the <laughs> eyes, Kawhi, and you lied to my face and my family. You can go to hell. And you know what? Uh, the half line in Toronto, you know? Honestly, I hope Uncle Dennis is like, yo, sit out. Just so Kawhi can be like, yo, this this dude's a clown, you know? <laughs> like, I know he's really close with his uncle, whatever. I'm not going to tell you to reject your family or anything, but uh, you should do a harder look at who you're trying to sell with. Like, his agent. His agent's like a nondescript agent who barely represents anyone. He's got some weird people around him. And... <laughs> Unfortunately, it happened at fucking your fan base's behalf. Yeah, but. <laughs> which I don't know. Like again, I complain about it, and people in my DMs would be like, "Look, just be happy you're not a fucking Kings fan." You know, like I'm a Kings yeah. fan. You're you're you know, quit whining. It's like, yeah, that's a good point. True. Yeah, he did that's go David point. Robinson, Tim Duncan, Kawhi Leonard, and then now Demar Derozan. Like it's been a great run. Yeah, I mean, you guys have Demar for this year, the next year, then he's a player option after that. And you have Lamarcus for this year and two more years. So you have these two talented guys for a while. So you know the uh, the the doom and gloom, the end of the Spurs that people have been predicting for fucking damn near ten years, still ain't close. I'll so, tell you what, man. I could that. <laughs> I could have sworn LeBron was going to come to S to San Antonio. Dude, I would have loved that. Honestly, I really that thought cool. he was. I, I really like. There was a part of me that was like, man, he loves pop, and I would not be shocked if he was like, let me, let me. Let me go, you know, play for the Spurs and Pop for the final years of Pop's career. I I genuinely thought it was going to happen for a while. He'd already been in Cleveland. Small market is not a doesn't mitigate LeBron in any way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was plausible at least. Um. So I remember, I remember you're 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 mad when the boogie news happened. Give me your take on uh, Cousins to the Lakers. Do you actually think it'll make a big difference? Because that that's something I I, I don't believe in. I don't. Boogie and the Warriors? Yeah. Just given the the history of ACL injuries in the NBA. Especially uh, for a big man. Yeah. Um, let alone a guy like Rudy Gay. You, you've seen it. How long yeah. did it, it take him to even be a passable rotation level player? Now yeah. you're telling me a 280 pound center who already was more of a half court player and a bad defender and a locker room malcontent. You're telling me he's going to bounce back right away and be useful for that, for that talented team. I, I just don't see it. I just, I need to see it happen first. I you just, know, I just headline, see I it as headline. they're too good anyway, and they don't need an extra chance, you know. Yes, we, we, they don't need an extra all star, all pro. Like it's just it, this this fucking giant ass snowball is rolling down this hill, and it's gonna keep on picking up guys who are who want to. Re- they're they're gonna find a bunch of David Wests out there, <laughs> and it's just like. And I knew it was gonna happen. I talked about it on the morning show. Uh, and I made a joke about like it's becoming an arms race where like the Warriors are probably going to be like, oh, you oh, LeBron, you want to go to L.A. And, and bring some people? Cool. 
hey, who wants to come play for us? Who wants to go and play for a vet right. minimum or, or whatever? But and, but and then it's five big. hours later, fucking Boogie goes. And I was like, you got to be fucking shitting yeah. me, dude. It, it, Blue, I just like, it's going to continue to happen. And at this point, how can it be stopped? <laughs> and well, and that's the thing. I, I talked about this with John last week. It's in the case of Boogie, because of the ACL injury, ACL injury and because the lack of cap smoothing and all those stupid dumb deals everyone gave out in 2016, like Joakim Noah, Mozgov, et cetera, <laughs> Luol Deng. Because of that, a lot of teams didn't have cap space to really get Boogie. And like, if you look at the way it went down, Boogie wanted like a, a few years. He know he didn't wasn't getting a full max with the injury, but he wanted some money, right? And then he wasn't getting that. And then everyone started filling what cap space they had, like your signed JaVale McGee, for example. And the next thing you know, he looks around on Monday. He doesn't have any offers. And a lot of teams that he probably could have went to said, now nah, we're going to get someone else. And then he's like, all right, fine. I'm going to offer up my services for a lower deal to Boston or Golden State. And he went with Golden State. So it's like, it's a lot. It's really a pro. It was a product of what happened because, I mean, Golden State hasn't really, and before this, the Miami Heat with LeBron and ring chasing, attracting veterans is a normal thing. But usually it's like your Shane Battiers, right? Your Richard yes. Lewis, your Mike Lewis, Ray Allen when they're older, right? David West right now. 36, um, 37 year old people looking to you know find glory at the end who may not have had it yet right that's that's but, sort of the things i'd expected right so boogie's like well i'm gonna miss ha- at least half the year and i probably stink for the rest of it why not do it while getting a ring i, yeah. I understand this sentiment i don't i don't see it. this is like the snake move like like kd i just don't see it like, because you just think oh this no is me one, either. it's no, a one-year no. stop for for boogie because if he plays well he'll get a bigger deal the way the salary cap works with the collective bargaining agreement, Golden State can only offer him like 150% or something of the last deal they gave him, meaning Boogie can't get anywhere close to the max deal he wants from Golden State. He will have to go somewhere else. Oh, so, for sure. No, so I, I, it's, I, I it's, not, a one, it's a one stop, you know, one year stop for him at least. I was not angered by it in the way at all of like the way I was mad about KD. Um, to me, this is just like, God, fuck the Warriors. Like the rich get right. richer sort of thing. That's yeah, all. Man, fuck. That's the only sort of feeling that I had of like, you know, they may not have even wanted him and he may not have even wanted to go there, but it still happened. And it's like, and we're just, they, they we're had, just getting they stronger. Say, you know? like, why not? You know? Yeah, exactly. And, and I, and that's the fear is that like, it's going to just happen more and more. Um, yeah. I was hoping time, you know, there won't be an Eastern conference, you know, like, I don't know. It's just so fucking silly. Yeah, I, I think there's talk. Adam Silver's acknowledge it. Reseeding, you know, at least like the bottom half of the, both conferences is smart. Just when the talent, you know, is is there's more talent in the West. You shouldn't punish the Denver Nuggets, who are a fucking damn good team. Might miss the playoffs yet again now that LeBron's in the Lakers. You know, it's you know, maybe you locked in the top four seeds from both conferences, and the rest, you know, the other eight teams can be from whatever conference, right? Yeah. Because I would like to see that, but man, it's uh, it's NBA is fucking wild, man. It is, dude. So and many it's like, people it's, have changed teams. In the yeah, past it's two like, I saw that tweet of like, uh, yeah, everyone. Here are all the players at the end of the of the 2016 season. It's like KD was on the Thunder, yeah. and uh, or 2015, 2016. Yeah, Blake, it's Chris great. Paul, Butler, George, KD, LeBron, Kyrie, Gordon it's Hayward, wild. and we'll Not see if um. It. We'll see if uh, I know this is like a pipe dream, but I know that there was all these like, oh, will Jimmy Butler go to the Spurs? Like that'd be fucking rad. That would be rad. I don't know, man. It's that. just it, it, cool. it's annoying, but it's fun, and it's you know heartbreaking, but beautiful to watch. And you know, it's just a it's a big mat, you know, fucking mixed bag of emotions that I feel all the time with this goddamn league that constantly mm-hmm. finds a way to give you hope. And then immediately take it away from you. Hey, like, at least you're not a Knicks fan like me, man. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, like as as much of a LeBron fan as I am, I I do love LeBron, and I love me too. I I enjoy that people don't like him. <laughs> like it, it, it's like this weird sort of thing that I have where it's like it's fun. It's it, it, honestly it's kind of the same thing that the same way I feel about Tom Brady. Or it's like. You guys can oh, hate him all you want. Like, yeah, he's a piece of shit and he like supports Trump and stuff, but like, you know, fuck. Just 
scoreboard dog you know what i mean like that's and that's how i feel about lebron like you know i know lebron's three and six in the finals or whatever but it's like who cares <laughs> like the fact that you guys are going to act like he's not even close to your beloved michael jordan like no it's the kobe fans are worse he ain't better than kobe get the fuck out oh of here. yeah that's, those are the worst yeah yeah and and it's funny to see the way that whole dynamic's playing out you know your point about brady though i'm a jets fan and i get to use brady as an excuse that's my crutch Oh, oh sure. We, Tom Brady's been here for twenty fucking years. That's why we haven't been bad. Look who we've been playing against. You know, it's an exactly. excuse. I love it. <laughs> That's two losses hate, on the on the record every year. <laughs> you know, what's it been like living in the Bay around all the Warriors fans as the Warriors are this good and this dominant? Like, That's a how, what has it been hell. like? It's a living fucking hell. <laughs> I want goddamn San Andreas two to happen here right now and just tear this whole coast to the ground. Um. <laughs> It's um, it's it's whatever, man. It's uh, you know, you, but uh, you, I do. I judge every goddamn one of them. You bet I, do. you bet I do. Like every time I see anybody with a Warriors anything, apparel, hat, cap, uh, jacket, sweater, hoodie, T-shirt, it's like how long have you fucking been a fan for? It's like and the you first know, you thing know, that comes to my mind. I mean, fuck, Colin said it years ago. Ain't none of you were wearing uh, Golden State gear a few seasons ago. He all came out of the woodwork when they got good. Yeah. And, I mean, it happens with any team, but it happens with every there. team. But like, you know, what sucks about the Warriors is like their, their, their true loyal fans are in fucking Oakland. And what yeah. do you do? You're leaving their ass for the new state, a new arena you're building for all the fucking tech bros. Yeah. Oh, know? yeah. That, that, that uh, fan that base sucks. is going to get so divided. It's going to really, it's going to be they lost the Raiders too. It's gonna it's gonna happen. Um, like the thing that I get annoyed with being a Cowboys fan is like I, I hate that the tickets are so expensive because it's a bunch of rich people that don't give a shit about getting drunk and making noise, and yelling and rooting for your team, which is like yeah. there's so many times where it's like, is this a home game or an away game? When, when I watch Cowboys games, because it's like the only people who could afford tickets are rich people that don't really give a fuck about being there. And they're that's, there just to take a couple Instagram photos. That's crazy for Jerry World because that's a fuck ton of seats there. Too. It's massive <laughs> in there. It's I've been to two games. It's fucking massive. But it's like every time there's a home broadcast, it's like I can't. Where's the noise, guys? And it's right. you need sort of the insane people from the middle class to go crazy, and that's what we that's need. True. And and I think I think Golden State like Roracle is they're losing that. I think that's a big piece, dude. Seriously. Mm hmm. The momentum yeah. they get when Curry does a behind the legs, uh, you know, between the legs dribble, those mm -hmm. fuckers go crazy for anything, man. Yeah, it's like it's like they, they just started watching basketball or something. Yeah, yeah. they go yeah, they go works. insane when there's like a layup. It's fucking <laughs> wild. Oh my god, what's a work working more cool, Greg? How hardcore is he for the Warriors? He's a Warriors fan, but he's not a hardcore Warriors fan. Oh, okay. He'll tell you otherwise, but I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> I guess yeah. better than the opposite. <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. I, I think he likes wearing the caps more than anything. Fair enough. Yeah, he does. But no, nah, no, nah, he keeps up. He like he'll listen to sports podcasts and stuff like that. And um, every once in a while, he'll, ha he'll ask me a question about something. Did you hear about this and that? What, what's that all about? And I'll you know, because I I feel like I'm more of the everyday sort of sports. Uh, viewer listener you know sure oh, you do so, listen to Lebatard, right yeah so that's that's where that's where i'll sort of like help him out with what the hell this story is about and why nice. this player's mad or whatever um no but i always give him shit for like he was streaming on the kind of funny vids uh kind of funny games twitch channel mm -hmm. when they won and i was like you weren't even watching you were streaming when they won <laughs> <laughs> i was giving shit about that <laughs> All right, man. Well, this has been fun. Anything else that's interested you? NBA, the wild NBA. Recently, um, to think. Man, not Talk really. About a little bit. I'm just excited that yeah, like oh yeah, I, we I totally didn't even talk about. It. Forgot to talk about that. Um, because I ended up talking about Brady. <laughs> um, but like I love LeBron. I love how good he is and how much it pisses other people off. But him going to the Lakers, it's like I can't support you here, my guy. Like, the Lakers are the like our mortal enemies. Like, there's no way I could ever want you to succeed there. I want you to fail so bad as a Laker, you know. 
And I'm so happy that they're probably not going to win because he's surrounded by Lance Stevenson and JaVale McGee. And Rondo. And Rondo. Jesus CP. Christ. That's insane. And um, they have the back-to-back summer league MVPs, though. Lonzo and Hart. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, I mean, we'll, you know, the good thing about that is they have good young players that are going to be cheap for a while. Um, they're going to have, they might have a new golden state happening where it's like, yes, we can keep this team intact because they're all making 40,000 a year (laughs) or something crazy. And and that's the thing that that's, that's interesting about this move where they're just going to wait for the 2019 free agents. They can sign them out, right? Keep the kids. I get it. Only thing is LeBron's entering year 16. Yep. You know, we're st- you're kind of taking LeBron for granted with this. Yeah, the, LeBron is on board with the plan by all counts, but you know, maybe the LeBron bottom's will coast gonna, the bottom's going to fall him. out, but I don't think it'll be for another three years. I think yeah. even what we saw in the playoffs and in the finals in this past season, yeah. it's like, what is he doing, man? How is he still man. doing this at this level? I think he's going to. I think he's going to try and play until his fucking oldest son can play. Bronny James, that'd be wild. His son's How nineteen, like thirteen, uh, something like that. Yeah, he's going like eighth grade or something. Yeah, I think LeBron will be thirty-eight, <coughs> thirty-nine when Bronny's nineteen, something like that. So it's plausible. He should and, just get a wheelchair and not walk anymore, so, and he could just expand, like expend all his energy on the court. Well, that's the thing. Windhorse had a piece uh, during the season, I think, towards when the players were starting, how LeBron like rests during games by like walking back on D and stuff, and like oh yeah, he he like Walks never the moves most. without the ball. Like yeah, yeah, does it and like there was a whole a whole study of this. Like when he's on the ball, he's not moving at all. He's saving all his energy. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's nuts because I mean, all the minutes he's played in the playoffs, he's added like two and a half seasons extra to playing time. During this whole fi- uh, seven straight finals runs, so and isn't easy. And you're under year sixteen. It's it's never been done before. That mileage so, like will catch up, and it's like we. I mean, the fuck the same thing's been said about Brady for the last fucking yeah. six years. You know, one day, <laughs> one day, one day it'll happen. I'm sorry for I'm sorry for your trials and tribulations as a Jets fan, but it hasn't That's been much good, better man. as a Cowboys fan. So don't worry about it. Yeah, That's the thing. At least like. People are like, oh, the Jets are terrible. I'm actually, we're middle of the pack since 2000. <laughs> Check the record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are a split 500. That's how Jason Garrett likes it. God, Garrett, I hate Jason Garrett. Why is he still there? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I honestly don't even have a problem with him, but I'm just like, I don't get why he's still there either. <laughs> he's just not that great. Yeah. And and here, here's the thing. like This is like the, the consensus, like, you know, intelligentsia football take, right? You have a cheap quarterback who's good in the NFL. You surround him with a fuck ton of good players and you go for the playoffs. So the Rams are doing right now. That's what the Eagles just won Super Bowl with. That's how what Seattle did with Russell Wilson. Like that's how you build a team. And you have Dak Prescott. He's cheap and he's he's good enough. But what the fuck are you doing with that defense still? God, they're just throwing away this opportunity. They should be a lot better. I'm excited to see what the D line does this year with like Randy Gregory coming back and yeah. And Stay just the young the guy, yeah, t- yeah, Taco Charlton. Like, I'm excited to see if he can provide Marcus anything. Lawrence, of course, um, Demarcus Lawrence. Yeah, I, uh, I'm excited, man. I, I'm like weirdly optimistic, and I probably shouldn't be, but I don't give a Were shit. Were you I, someone who who liked the Zeke pick? Because I thought they should have taken Jalen Ramsey there, given their defensive issues. And I thought I, just, I think running backs in the top ten is just too high, given the shelf life of the position. But yeah. Zeke was really good that first year, like. I understand the appeal. But. Oh, yeah. No, he's going to be good for a while. But I, I totally agree with you where I wanted Jalen Ramsey as well because I I was of the mentality that we can plug in any guy here and he'll get he'll run for 1,200. Yo, that line. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Alfred but, Morris, you had him. I was like, that, that, you don't you have Amo already. You don't, you don't need fucking uh, running back. Yeah, but I mean, I think we saw what happened when it wasn't Zeke and it was Alfred That's Morris. True. And like, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like... It was still wasn't pretty dynamic, good, but it wasn't Zeke good. And yeah. that's like a huge difference. And, and what it does to the offense, what it does to what defenses change when Zeke isn't mm-hmm. on the field and how it affected Dak right. and how teams knew how to prepare for Dak. Uh, I totally saw it coming a mile away. Like I knew that the second year was not going to be as good. 
Sure. And it sure wasn't because man, Dak was so underwhelming and so mm-hmm. just uh just kind of a disappointment in his second year. I was really sad to see how like Des Bryant like really fizzled out. Like that dude's got like damn near eighty career touchdowns. Like he, he, oh, was, he was a, a fucking a... force for like five years in a row. That then... back shoulder fade with Romo was just like it was death taxes and the back shoulder fade to Des in the end zone. Fuck like yeah. And that's what happened every Sunday. And I think you saw what happened. It's been I, 29. I, I think the gulf in talent was so evident when Dez's production this. dropped off. And it's like, you can see how much better of a quarterback Roma was than Dak, right. where Dez is just such a non factor. There was this an interesting graph put out of like completions over 20 yards over mm-hmm. like the last 20 years for the Cowboys. And it's like, Oh, you can kind of see where you can. No, not you can kind of. You can exactly see the point where Romo stopped being a quarterback, where it's like the last two years of completions over 20 yards. The drop off is just so astounding and really kind of alarming. (laughs) Yeah, I was always a big fan of Romo. I know he gets a lot of hate, but I think I I mean, his numbers speak for themselves, honestly. But uh, I liked him in the booth this last year, too. I thought he was awesome to listen to call a game it's just so oh, he's fun and he's fun and when he's calling like shit before it happens it's fucking awesome yeah you know? it was it was super fun to watch but yeah i was always like the romo apologist where it's like look he was never uh, the problem like, as it much as i don't like God. as much as i've kind of had it with colin cowherd like he, i think he put it perfectly when he was talking about mm-hmm. romo and just like this guy held up mediocre to below average teams mm-hmm. for his whole career yeah and look at when, those defenses and when Always. the franchise finally got smart and drafted offensive linemen, he got hurt, and that was it. And that's like all it took. It was like they finally got smart and they drafted O linemen, and they were finally getting good. And he didn't dive soon enough, and he got tackled from behind, and that's all she wrote. And it's like it was such a heartbreaking thing of like, man, that's exactly how it went down. Like they were so bad with their draft picks, they were so bad. Uh, trading for Roy Williams and draft, you know, selling away a first and a third and a fourth and a fifth, whatever the fuck they gave up for him. Mm-hmm. It's like they gave up. They were so bad managing, like in front office, Jerry uh, Jones, um, just the whole family was just fucking up. <laughs> and when yeah. they finally got smart with their picks, and it was like the year that they didn't go for Johnny Manziel, like yeah, that right. was the year where they showed, like, hey, we get it now, right? And you know, he, you start to see the upside. You start to see the production. DeMarco Murray starts tearing it up. And then it's like, he, Romo gets hurt and it's over for him. You know, like once they finally got smart, it was too late. And it's just such a heartbreak. Such a heartbreaker. Yep. I hear you. Yeah. DeMarco Murray, he just fucking retired too. Pretty I mean, insane. Was, yeah. Pretty insane. I mean, he's 30, 30 years old. 30. And he was the offensive player of the year two seasons ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. And like, and like you spoke about loyalty in sports, before, loyalty before, like Le'Veon Bell, they're not giving him the money he wants because of uh, the Steelers, because you not they don't you don't pay for past performance in the NFL. No, it's all you about don't. for me lately. Oh, a twenty six year old really good running back with a lot of miles. Yeah, how how long are you still gonna be great? Yeah, and like that. That's the business. There's, there's, there's no give him a two year for like forty eight or fifty <laughs> or something like that. Not even that. That's quarterback money. It's crazy. And like the NFL, it's not even, most money ain't even guaranteed. It's fucking wild. Yeah. Like, ah, well, Cowboys, Jets. I have decent optimism because of Sam Darnold. Got some good defensive players, but yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, I never get too too hyped for the football season. It's just I play fantasy. At this oh point. sure. <laughs> no, I haven't been in fantasy. I haven't been into fantasy since like oh oh eight or oh nine. Oh, I just damn. totally fell out. I like it when I started playing, honestly. Uh, but this is fun, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming on. Glad we could finally do this. I think I fucking DM'd you like when the finals I it. Yo, we gotta talk about this Kawhi shit. And then I was like, actually, let's wait for the trade to happen. And the yeah. trade wasn't gonna happen. That's fucking what I was trade doing. finally and happened. Trade actually happened. And it happened on a day where like everybody's out of the <laughs> office and I can record it early, which is like perfect. So yeah, I had fun, Dave. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Um, if you don't know, if you're a fan of mine, not a fan of Andy's, uh, kind of funny games, go find at Maxim Cortez on Twitter. Andy, you stream 
from time to time now, right? Doing that four did, action. Yeah, like what, three to five times a week almost. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still playing PUBG with uh with your roommate pits from time to time. Not into not into this this Fortnite nonsense. No no battle pass needed for me. Uh, I, I prefer my bugs and my vehicles. Sure, yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> hey, we we have a hey, we have a golf cart now. You can come get your vehicles. That is cool. That is cool. You can have fun over here. I was on the same boat. I was like, fuck Fortnite, it's stupid. And I kept saying it and then I started playing it. I was like, fuck this game. And I just kept playing it. I was like, man, all right, I get it. I get it. I never no, thought I, I would. It. Never thought I would. Yeah, and uh so like I said before, normal pop culture podcast every week. I've been doing these sports talks the past two weeks. I'll try and find someone else to talk with next week. John Owen and uh, Andy were my top two on my list, and I already got them, so I got to find more people to talk to. But <laughs> yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter at Martin Swagger. Follow the show, soundcloud.com slash nostalgia pod. Leave a rating review on iTunes if you so please. Subscribe on YouTube, biggest help right now. But yeah, other than that, uh, peace out. See you next week. <laughs>